G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Saturday afternoon here in Australia, market down again, so down to 2.57 trillion, down 1.8% overall. So again, the weekend retracement, it's a thing at the moment. It's obviously coming back. BTC dominance uh, has dropped again, so now under 45%. We'll have to wait and see, you know, was that the peak of kind of the Bitcoin run and is it just going to go downwards from now and not the Bitcoin price? I'm just meaning its dominance. Will we go into, again, some kind of, you know, big spectacular alt season and kind of bitcoin run all in one as has happened before or is you know something different going to happen a lot of people are banking on what's happened previously to happen again and you know i don't want to say it won't happen but it just yeah it'll be interesting to see if it's going to play out like everyone thinks it will you know it'll be good if it does for people who've been here for a while then it's going to work well but i just get the feeling like you know people who've come into this space and put a lot of money in aren't going to let it happen exactly like that uh they're going to want to make their profits uh and you know try and juice everybody else so that is something that uh is in the back of my mind constantly but we'll have to wait and see you know hence why that old saying you know don't be scared to take profits because no one ever lost money taking profits because you just never know when the top might be in Look, it could have a long, long way to go yet, this bull market, but it also might not. So something to keep in mind. Right, Bitcoin price just under 62, well, just over 61,000. Actually, I was going to say just under 62. Uh, not quite. And gas prices uh, are down a little bit, which is not too bad either. So, you know, make the most of it while you can, as they say. All right, last 24 hours, what's done well, considering the market is down overall? Top 100 we're focusing on. Nice move from OKB, Phantom moving, Ecomi, Curve, Huobi. Look, lots of nice double-digit gains there. And then some pretty decent single-digit gains as well. And this is considering the market is down. So imagine what it's like when the market goes up. Terra Luna having another nice move. All right, again, overall the market's down. So what hasn't performed so well? All right, stacks down 5%, flow 5%, uh, OMG, the graph down 3%. Uh, again, the, the losses are pretty minimal and actually look like uh, the gains were pretty nice. But again, that's the overall total amount so outside of the top 100 as well. And I'm guessing some of the um, lower cap altcoins probably took uh, a bit of a beating considering a few in the top 100 are actually up. All right, let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. And here we go. Bang, it made it up above its all-time highs and it's quickly dropped down. But look where it's sitting. Yep, came back down to retest kind of the area that it was before. So this could be considered a bit of a fake out. And now we're really just waiting to see exactly what's going to happen from here. You know, are we going to, so we'll bring this in a little bit there. Are we going to roll over? Was this a double top? And again, a bit of a double top with a fake out to then go lower. Or is this just some exuberance? We've got to come back uh, and retest this kind of key level. And it is key. We can see we've got uh, some support resistance there. And again, we got resistance over here. And there we go. Resistance there as well. So this is a kind of a key level that we really need to most likely Again, for a healthy chart pattern, and this is never financial advice, it's always just personal opinion, but this is a bit of TA. It is healthy for something to break out of something, come back, retest it, and then move up. That's actually a healthy and bullish move. So is that what, uh, is, that what is happening right now? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. That's what I'm thinking it more likely is. But hey, again, I've always, and I say this all the time, I've always got in the back of my head, what happens if I'm wrong? What happens if that's not it? And this is about to happen. And this could be a double top with a bit of a fake out here. We just have to wait and see. Again, this could definitely easily come back down and maybe have to retest somewhere down here, 57, 58,000. I don't see that as the most likely outcome. But look, I don't know everything. And, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and markets in general are going to do what they want to do, not what you think they're going to do, or not necessarily what you want them to do, because we all want this to go up to 100,000. That's what we're all hoping for. But look, that just may not be on the cards this time around. But again, I'm leaning more towards that that is what's going to happen. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see and never financial advice. All right, just a couple of stories I want to focus on at the moment. The weekend obviously is here. There's not a lot going on. But there was a 
uh, conference uh, by Massari a while ago and there was this rumour going around that the SEC were there and served documents on some people. I think it was just before they went up on stage or just when they came off stage. I can't remember exactly what it was. But it turns out Terra Luna's uh, Do Kwon, so he's the guy that invented it, he was one of the people that was actually served uh, by the SEC there. So the rumour is confirmed that, yes, people were, I mean, they were sort of confirmed anyway, that, you know, some people or projects, whatever you want to call it, were served by the SEC there, and it was uh, Terra Luna. And what it has to do is in regards to mirror protocol. So at issue is Terra's mirror protocol, a decentralized finance platform on, on which synthetic stocks mirroring the price of major US firms are minted and traded. So very, very interesting. Everyone's been you know, really worried about this whole synthetics thing. Originally, you know, early earlier this year and even sort of, you know, last year, everyone was super bullish on synthetics protocols including you know synthetics uh and terra luna's uh, mirror protocol and things like that and all of a sudden the sec said we believe that their securities they're unregistered and then all of a sudden those kind of projects have not fared so well even synthetics is way way down it's really stuck around that nine dollar range now it's not to say that these projects can't pump a whole lot later but i think while you know there's these kind of things hanging over uh, their heads, uh, they're unlikely to do well until, again, they get some clarity on exactly what is a security, what's not a security. You know, can you do synthetic trading of assets uh, without being regulated and having KYC and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, AML, you name it, all those kind of things. I think that is really what is going to hold those projects back. I think the same with, you know, synthetics, uh, network, you know, they're probably going to have to have some kind of KYC, uh, AMML and, you know, terrorism sort of stuff happening on there to make sure that their pro uh, projects slash programs aren't being used for that. I'm just not sure if that is even possible, for, particularly for things like synthetics, which is, you know, getting a lot more decentralized as it goes along. I mean, you know, I'll do a video on synthetics in the not too distant future because there's lots of interesting things happening there. But long-term viability, I think that's, you know, a di direction that they're going to have to head. And, you know, Daquan, Daquan, sorry, Daquan, Daquan, uh, he is obviously the first to be served uh, with these kind of projects. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if something similar happens to uh, Kane Warwick now. Uh, he's an Australian. I love the synthetics uh, network, you know, the whole project and everything about it. Uh, so I'm definitely not trying to throw uh, any shade or fight on him whatsoever, but... Yeah, next time he's in the US, we'll have to wait and see uh, whether, you know, he gets served with something from the SEC. Now, they're not exactly the same uh, protocols, so Mirror Protocol and Synthetics, but they are definitely very similar. And, you know, Synthetics uh, Network pro Protocol had a whole... Oh, can it be a network protocol, I suppose? Synthetics, anyway, had a whole stack of sort of different kind of assets, but then they were all eventually uh, sort of removed... Uh, and you can't trade on them, or at least they're not on the front uh, page of like Uniswap and things like that. The front the front page, yeah, the front web page of it. And I haven't been able to find them on the uh, Synthetics or Quenta uh, protocol sites either. So maybe they have gotten rid of, rid of them for the time and maybe in time they will come back. But at the moment they're getting rid of those things uh, to avoid any issues with the SEC. And maybe Mirror Protocol didn't do that, so... Uh, it is something we'll have to wait and see because it says down here again that it was the synthetic assets that were mirroring US firms uh, that are minted and traded. They were the issue that the SEC was really worried about. But there we go. So we were all very suspicious that the SEC had served someone and now we know that absolutely someone was and unfortunately it was Do Kwon from Terra Luna. I don't think it's really going to affect the price of Terra Luna because Terra Luna... Uh, don't have to worry about that so much. Mirror Protocol uh, definitely could affect their price somewhat. Now, this is big, and thank God it was sorted. Polygon has paid a $2 million bounty on a bug which could have compromised $850 million in user funds. So, like Polygon, I'm super bullish on this platform. And look, even they've got bugs. And it was lucky that it was a white hacker that found this and not someone... Uh, that would like to hold them for ransom or actually, you know, 
yeah, steal's probably the best way to put it, steal a whole stack of user funds. So in an October 21 blog post from uh, Umenifor, um, I don't even know how to say that, uh, Immunify, I'm going to guess how that's how they say it, a security service that helps facilitate bug reports in decentralized finance, finance projects, Polygon's network, Polygon Network's Plasma Bridge was at risk of having 850 million removed by a knowledgeable hacker. So lucky it was a white uh, a white hat hacker that found it and told them about it. And look, they have fixed it, which is good, but it just goes to show how early we are in all these projects. Uh, even the big ones, you know, like Polygon uh, could have had major issues. And, you know, there's been so many other projects that have had issues and hackers have got in there and, you know, taken funds and all the rest of it. But really what we're seeing is even if there are bugs there and people can take the money, it's generally pretty hard for them to actually get away with the funds and they do end up returning it for a bit of a fee. Uh, and look, I don't know why they kind of do that. I guess they think they're gonna get away with it long term and then they work out they can't and then they pretend like, oh, this was a white hack and they're happy to like keep a million or $2 million when they got away with hundreds of millions at one stage. I'd probably just find the bug and just let them know, hey, uh, here's a bug, you know, and take the rewards rather than trying to see if you could take hundreds of millions. Because what we know about blockchain is it's all right there. It's very plain to see. Now there are, you know, wash, uh, washing machine type uh, protocols that can help, you know, wash the wash the transactions and all the rest of it and make it hard for law enforcement and that to catch up with them but we're finding even those aren't working so well so yeah polygons i'm very very glad that this was found nice and early and look this two million dollar bounty is one of the biggest bounties ever paid so polygon you know really uh, rewarded this white hacker quite handsomely considering that the white hacker found this bug uh, and then again, did the right thing and let them know so they could fix it and all the rest of it. And a $2 million bounty, that is quite nice. Again, there's only been one bigger previously. So this is, it's actually a good story. It's not a bad story. Uh, but again, it just does go to show that, you know, all of these projects, you know, Solana had their issues and, you know, all sorts of projects have because they're still super early. And similar kind of things have happened to Bitcoin. There's been uh, double spend stuff that they had to get on top of and Ethereum as well. And there was, you know, times where the whole networks were down and all sorts of stuff have happened. So there's the good, the bad side, which is all of that. But the good side is that's how early we are. You are still super early to crypto. You know, you get in now and if you're in the right projects and you hold for 10 years, I mean, you know, look how well Bitcoin's done in the last 10 years. Look how well Ethereum's done since its inception in 2000, I think 14, 2015. So sort of eight years. The good projects that are going to be here and stick around long term, you are... You can basically consider yourself like a VC, not exactly a VC, but like a VC. You're so early. These things haven't even been released to the major part of the world yet. So the ones that stick around and have long-term viability, if you're in them now and you know I've got a reasonable position, even if it's only a couple of hundred dollars, you know where they could be in the future really just kind of boggles the mind. It's like investing, you know, in Bitcoin at, you know. 10 to 50 dollars or something like that if you're in the right project yes there's going to be bear markets and it'll probably you know drop 80 percent during those and as long as you don't panic and panic sell for a loss again this is you being in good projects though we don't know which ones are good and which ones are bad but if you are in good ones for oh, 10 years time again you could be you yeah, have untold found wealth all right, that's it for me. Just a short one today. What I will do today is I'll focus on some of the coins that I really like and where they're at and whether I think they're good buys. But until then, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Down a little bit today, but generally we still should all be uh, in the green. And I'll see you next time.